Thanks for choosing this video to cover the basics of inborn errors of metabolism and the different type of tests we use to figure out which pathway might be involved in your error of metabolism. So remember back to high school biology. At the end of the day, our main goal in metabolism is to make ATP. And remember that that ATP comes through the electron transport chain that gets electrons from the citric acid cycle or the TCA cycle. If you remember back to Biology 101, we've all learned a lot about how glucose is used to convert through glycolysis and the citric acid cycle to create that ATP. But we know that there are other food products that we can use for energy as well. Some of those are protein, which can be converted to create energy, as well as fats, which are also converted to create energy. And within inborn errors of metabolism, a defect in any of these pathways can lead to a deficiency of ATP, and that can lead to metabolic demand that cannot be met in a sick child. So let's talk for a minute about the glucose pathway. If you remember back, the glucose is converted to the intermediate pyruvate, and that, that pyruvate, if the citric acid cycle or the electron transport chain aren't working well, gets converted to lactate. So you can imagine that if I have a defect in one of these two pathways, then my pyruvate and lactate levels would be abnormal, and I can check those in a clinical lab. As you all know, you can also check glucose levels to determine if this pathway might be involved in your child with a proposed inborn error metabolism. The next pathway let's talk about is the protein degradation pathway. So as you remember, proteins are made up of amino acids. And in amino acid metabolism, the amino group gets removed as an ammonia. That ammonia goes through the urea cycle to create urea, which can then be excreted in the urine. So if you think you have a defect in the urea cycle, you can check ammonia levels to determine if there's an increase in ammonia indicating a urea cycle defect. That's why any child with a change in mental status should have an ammonia checked pretty much at any age. We especially see this in newborns. Anytime they come in for sepsis, they should get an ammonia check because we're suspicious of a urea cycle defect. If you think about the name amino acids, when you remove the amino group, you're left with an acid. So the compounds that are formed after you take off the amino group are organic acids. So if you have a defect in this section of the pathway that converts the protein to the metabolites that can be used in the citric acid cycle and the, to make energy, then you have abnormalities or buildup of organic acids. So that's why you would check urine organic acids if you think you have a defect here. They build up in the urine and that's why it's easier to see in the urine than in other body fluids. And finally for this pathway, we can also check plasma amino acids to determine if there's an abnormality in the very first steps of the protein breakdown pathways. Now we can also look at fats and determine if that pathway is affected as an inborn error metabolism. So remember back that when you have fats, they're long carbon chains, and in fat metabolism, to create energy, we clip off two carbon chains at a time. So as you're clipping off those carbon chains using the process called beta oxidation, you have enzymes that are required for the very long chains, so those carbon chains that are 12, 14, or 16 carbons long. The medium chains, which are C6, C8, and C10 carbons long, and then the short chain, which are less than C6. So at each of these steps, you have a different enzyme that's required for this metabolic step. So if you have a defect in a very long chain, fatty acyl dehydrogenase, you're gonna accumulate long chains of carbons. So you're gonna have these, for example, C14 length carbons. Whenever you have free carbons floating around your bloodstream, your body has a defense mechanism to get rid of them so that they don't damage the body. That defense mechanism is by taking the acyl group, which is these long carbon chains, and conjugating them to carnitine. That's why when you check an acyl carnitine profile, we use chromatography to look for all of the different carbon lengths that are conjugated to carnitine in the plasma or in the blood. By doing this, then we can use 
lab studies to separate each of the carbon links so we can determine what length carbon is left over. For example, if you have 14 carbons left, you know you have a defect in this section of the pathway. If you have eight carbons in excess, you know you have a defect in this step of the pathway, and so on. So by using an acyl carnitine profile, it can hint at a defect here. Now, an acyl carnitine profile also gives me hints at this pathway over here. Because, remember, organic acids are just carbons with an acid group on one end. And those carbon chains can also be conjugated to carnitine, so it's kind of a buy one, get one free with your acyl carnitine profile. So now, by looking at this pathway, you can see that if I'm worried that someone has an inborn error metabolism, I'm thinking, should I send a plasma amino acids? Should I send an ammonia? Should I send a urine organic acids? I should pretty much always send a glucose. Should I send a pyruvate, a lactate level? And should I send an acyl carnitine profile? So hopefully this quick review has given you an idea of why we do the tests we do in inborn errors of metabolism.